After losing safety to Sean Elliott for the season after that Ravens-Vikings game, should the Ravens make a move and sign Trey Boston? These and much more on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on the same Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you would like to be a part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon and shout out to the team keep it clean patrons appreciate y'all uh, love y'all and team keep it clean we got some great questions as we always do we got a lot of them so you know what let's just jump straight into it first question came from my guy cam he said angry and how are you hope you and your family are doing well appreciate that cam he said my question is short and simple what will we do with the loss of Deshaun elliott and that is a very very good question um trey boston trey boston is it's it's coincidental this seems like one of those latavius murray type things where unfortunately the ravens they lose one of their main guys again which we all used to hearing over and over this season but coincidentally some guy just pops up and becomes available who nobody really knew was going to come available this happened with gus edwards and jk dobbins and justice when they all went down and latavius murray all of a sudden he gets released he gets cut it's like, oh, okay, well, might as well. Uh, and now with Trey Boston, all of a sudden he uh, drew Rosenhaus is saying that he's healthy now. And when I think of Trey Boston, first thing that would think of my that would come to my head was a hitter, somebody that could could bring it. He can hit, he can tackle, physical safety. But then shout out to my guy uh, Ray Fari, um, and, and then some other people chimed in too. But he got some range as well. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't know that about his game. I was not aware of that. But that's something that the I feel like the Ravens are definitely missing at the safety position. Like a true rangy safety that can make up for if the cornerback ends up out of position and that receiver is going, then you could sort of take that angle and, and close in on that receiver to either break, break up the pass, intercept the pass, or just do one of them hits and make that receiver not even want to catch it. Um, but I, I, we don't have that right now. Well, we don't have that on right now that's, that's actually playing. Um, and maybe Brandon Stevens. We'll see. Because Brandon Stevens is going to have a, a bigger role. Uh, like we talked about before with Brandon Stevens, um, the Ravens really love him. They really love this. Like, really love him. Um, and they've been getting him plenty of opportunity before. Um, so it's not like he's just going to be coming on the field and be like, oh, uh, oh, this is what it's like to be out here. No. He's been out there a lot. They've used him a lot. So I expect the, the main guy to fill that role um, to be Brandon Stevens. But I do think they should uh, sign Trey Boston. And Drew Rosenhaus even said, man, like even though when you when you aim low, then you're usually going to be uh, rewarded with something low. And what I mean by that when I say that is that if, if, if you shoot low, like, all right, you know what? Yeah, I'll take a practice squad deal. That's fine. I don't mind. And not that that's not, not that that's a bad thing. It's not. It's, it shows humility. It shows a willingness to compete and earn your spot. So it's not a bad thing at all. But Drew Rosenhaus, they put it out. Oh, yeah, Trey Boston is healthy. He's even willing to sign on somebody's practice squad. So that lets it be known to all 32 teams like, hey, if you want this guy, he's willing. He's willing to work for it. He's willing to earn it. And while he's on a practice squad, he can learn the scheme and everything. But he's healthy. So Ravens could look at that and be like, hey, okay, well, you know what? Couldn't hurt. So might as well. This question came from my boy Keith. He said, hey, Graven, I'm usually a silent supporter. Hey, it's all good, my friend. He said, this Deshaun Elliott injury really hit home. He was the heart of the defense. But next man up. Do you think the next man could be Jimmy Smith? We'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, um, like we were just talking about, I expect it to mainly be uh, Brandon Stevens. Uh, and again, we'll see if they bring Trey Boston in. But with Jimmy Smith, you know that they're going to do like this rotation. Because, uh, you know, Ravens, they they like having guys rotate. They like having um, one of their big sayings without them actually saying it is the more you can do. The more you can do. If you can play corner, cool. If you can play safety, too, cool. If you can play slot corner, okay, cool. If the more you can do. That's the more uh, value that you have to our squad. And they've been using Jimmy Smith as safety a little bit this year. 
Um, they did it a little bit last year too. Um, so now with Deshaun Elliott being out, I would expect him to do it even more, and especially uh, when Chris Westry comes back too, because that'll give us another player in the secondary. Um, and we definitely looking forward to him coming back. Just looking forward to as many people coming back as possibly can because, you know, Ravens, they are beat up bad. Um, so, yeah, I can see Jimmy Smith doing a little bit of safety. Next question came from my boy Martin, and appreciate you being a patient, Martin. He said two things. First, I think people forget when you're at the top, there's only one place to go from there. And I think that's the case for Marlon Humphrey. He's been one of the best. Um, I don't see it as he's regressing or anything like that. I just think it's our expectations. Oh, no, Marlon Humphrey, he's definitely struggled this year. He has definitely struggled this year, uh, for sure. Um, it, it does not make him a bad player. It doesn't make him a bad corner. But his, he, and like you said, the, when you're at the top, when you're the, one of the best, because I don't think he's the best corner in the league, but you, yeah, the only place to go for is down. Uh, but at the same time, if you're going to be considered one of the best, it just needs to be consistency. It needs to be consistency. And he's, um, that Jamar Chase game was rough, uh, but he's had he has more good games than bad. Uh, but even this season, in the games where he's given up some stuff, um, overall, overall, like again, he had his mishaps this season, and we just we're not used to that this much from him, Marlon Humphrey. But the, really, the whole defense has been struggling, uh, and you know, um, as much as we are missing him. Marlon Humphrey is definitely missing Marcus Peters on the other side. Oh, and the second thing from my guy Martin, I almost forgot it. He said, um, you know Stephen A. is thinking to himself, why couldn't Lamar have the type of season Mahomes is having so I could tell everyone <laughs> he's not an elite quarterback like Mahomes. LOL, just kidding. I thought I'd do my own hot take just like he does. Ooh, Martin with the pettiness. Next question came from Hadi, and, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, what's good, Engraven? Blessings to you and your family. After the live stream, I was left pondering on the mind state of our team this year. They came back three times from being down, two of which went to overtime. The narrative about Lamar and the Ravens not being able to win a game if they're losing is completely dead now. The team is 6-2, and two, despite all of the injuries. In my opinion, I think the Ravens are blowing everyone's expectations, and no one is talking about it. Can you imagine? If they were fully healthy, would love to hear your thoughts on the season so far. And whether you think this season will toughen the team's mindset and mentality. Much love, team man, and hashtag team keep it clean. Appreciate it, Howie. Um, I just, uh, I just wonder, um, like when, whenever you think about this team being possibly fully healthy, and it, it's crazy to think about because um, they're so far away from that. But whenever you think about if they were fully healthy, um, one thing I think that I, I don't think the passing game would be as good as it is right now i think it would have been better than it was last year but i don't think it would be as good as it is right now reason being reason i say that is because i feel like the ravens they were forced to up this passing game by a lot with their top running backs all being out because if, if jk was still here if gus was still here even justice too they would have been able to run the ball a lot better they, they would have been a lot more RPOs. You don't really see RPO too much anymore. They don't really run it that much anymore. But I, I think that the passing game, it, wouldn't, it would not have been where it is right now. Because um, I know a lot of us would think, oh, man, imagine this passing game and we had a running game too. I just, I just think with the injuries, they, they had to pass that ball because they, they weren't running like they used to run. They still aren't running like they used to run, but they don't have what they used to have. Um, another thing I wonder about, too, is how coaching would have been. Like, would coaching have been just a tiny bit more lax since you have a lot more better players out there? Uh, would they not have prepared as hard or prepared as much? Um, because you're like, all right, we got these players, we got this guy. Because right now, you, you really got to gotta almost over-prepare because you, the personnel that you got is not what you expected to have. So you got to overcompensate for some deficiencies you may have on a team. Now, if they didn't have those deficiencies, how would the coaching be? Would they coach as hard? So it's just one of the, some of the things that I think about um, if the team was fully healthy. Uh, but the fact that they're 6-2 and two right now, and you know how many people have been out, had the, they lost before the season, they lost during the season, that says a lot about this team, and, and they are doing a, a very, very good job, despite all the problems on defense, despite all the problems with the offensive line, despite, obviously, all the injuries, despite the lack of a, a consistent running game, despite Lamar having to do so much extra, despite all of that, 
They're six and, six and two. I can't even talk this morning. They're six and two. So that's a beautiful thing. Next question came from my boy Jarvo. He said, how do you feel about our slow starts in our defense? Oh, we've been talking about this all year. The slow starts, the slow starts puts them in bad situations. Uh, because when you start slow, then you got to play catch up. And Ravens, um, they have been a, a more of a second half team this year. Uh, but still, if they could start off faster, that would make stuff so much easier for them. And he said, what game do you think uh, Bateman will get his first touchdown in? I mean, this Miami game w wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad choice. Wouldn't be a bad choice at all. Um, because he, like, the, that team has been playing bad, and why not? Now, I don't think they should try to force it, but you can find a way. Find a way, make it happen. You, you'll get some opportunities. So, yeah, might as well do it. Miami, Thursday Night Football, the world watching. Why not? Next question came from my guy, Bashan. He said, what's up, Engraving? Been a sub for a while now and enjoy your content. Hey, appreciate that. Anyway, I want to know what do you think about the Ravens bringing in Jalen Smith after he was released by the Packers? Um, I, no, uh, no. I mean, what, what's, what's he going to do for the Ravens? Um, cause he, he got cut from the cow, not saying that he couldn't do any, but he got cut from the Cowboys cause he just started playing outright bad. Packers signed him. They cut this guy like a week or two later. Um, cause he was just playing bad. Um, so with the Ravens, they've already had enough struggles at linebacker. So you could sign him to the practice squad and just leave him there, try to coach him up. But I just... You, you you might as well stick with what you got if it's not broken now because they they fixed it it was broken before because usually say hey if it ain't broke don't fix it but it, cause it was broken before uh but they fixed it with josh pines and moving patrick queen next to him um chris board uh we'll see what happens with him um uh, christian welch like with Jalen smith i mean no I would, yeah no mm -mm. next question came from my boy dylan p he said engraving hope this question finds you well after that big win on sunday the raiders just cut cornerback damon arnett who was the first round pick back in 2020 with our secondary struggles should we sign him this will give us another quality depth player and give us the ability to move jimmy smith to free safety uh like like you would like to see with deshaun elliott for the year uh, thank you for all you do putting out these videos for giving us something to listen to about the Ravens 24-7. We appreciate it. Hope you and the family have a good time at the game on Thursday and you get the who into Jackson 5. That would be nice. I appreciate it. Uh, Damon Arnett, no. Not at all. Not one bit. Nope. Not a chance. Those not need. Nope. Like, I, I, I've seen this question come up before. Um, I, I've seen a couple of people ask this question before. And no, it's, it's, it's a no. And the reason that it's a no is because um sorry i just had to see if anybody else asked it too um do y'all remember what he got cut for <laughs> this guy got cut for threatening to kill somebody and waving guns around on instagram like no 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 next question came from a guy hc he said hey engraving been watching you since i started supporting the ravens in 2017 oh appreciate that you came in right before lamar so good timing he said just wanted to get your opinion on the bear Steelers game and the bad calls that were going on Especially the taunting call on Cassius Marsh. And whether or not you think the refs were acting a little suspect in terms of the way they officiated that game. Love from Australia and as always, hashtag keep it clean. Appreciate that. Oh yeah, it was, it was bad. And it was uh, obviously bad. It was bluntly bad. It was, uh, it, it was terrible. And uh, with NFL officiating, um, they have a lot of power. They have a whole lot of power. Sometimes some refs abuse that power, and they use it to their advantage. And sometimes that power gets used to the advantage of certain teams. Um, so seeing it can be very, very frustrating uh, as a fan of football. Um, and it just it, it messes with your mind, man. And you start thinking about stuff and wondering stuff and being like, oh, I just, uh, and it, it's, it's annoying. And a lot of the rules that the NFL makes, um, it just they aid the refs in just controlling a, a lot of these games and you just you never want the game to be up to the control of a ref uh you 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 want the players to be able to play and do their thing out there so it's just an unfortunate part of the business man this question came from a guy makai he said what's up engraving wanted to get your opinion on tyson williams i think they may be saving him for the end of the season due to the 17 game season and or the playoffs uh, i don't think so at all he said, also excited to see how Marlon bounces back. Oh, okay, this was before the Vikings game. He said, excited to see how Marlon bounces back against Minnesota after this terrible game against Tennessee. Keep up the great work. So, besides that big play with the whole Jamar Chase thing, and apparently that was more on uh, Chuck Clark than anybody, 
uh, Marlon did end up having a pretty good game. But uh, for Tyson Williams, you think they think they may be saving him for the end of the season? I uh, I don't think that's the case. I think that they just they they, he's, they don't like him. They don't like him. I think they just he's just there. He's just there like as a reserve reserve, and they're not feeling him. They don't want him to be getting any carries. They they're done with him. They're done with him. And again, that's why I thought that he would be gone. By um, I thought he would, I th- did not think he would make it to the Vikings game. But hey, he's still here. Um, and again, still our guy with the most explosives, explosion, but still our guy with the most burst. But it's just he's not gonna get the opportunities. He's not gonna get the carries. He's just just there. Next question came from my guy Simeon. He said, "Hey, Engraven, I'm a Ravens fan from the UK. Been watching NFL for about five years now, so I've been lucky enough to witness Lamar's entire career with us." He really is Superman. A lot of UK Ravens fans, recent supporters of the Ravens. That's cool, man. He says, so my question is this. Do my eyes deceive me, or did the Ravens actually cause some successful screen passes against the Vikings on Sunday? They actually did. Um, now, one of them. Oh, and it was such an obvious call. When, when we were live streaming, we were like, oh, boy, it's, it's third and 15. They're about to pull out a screenplay now. Watch them do a screenplay now. What do they do? They did a screenplay now. It worked. Mark Andrews has some nice blocks. The other guys had some nice blocks, and they went to Hollywood, and he got it. And Hollywood, Hollywood been with it with the yak, man. My guy been with it with the yak. But anyway, um, so yes, they they did actually call some successful screenplays, which we were very uh, pleased to see. Um, but we just hope that they can call some more in some different situations and get some in, involved to the running the running backs would be that'd be nice. Catch call, call some screens to the running backs, but. Anyway, he said, I know it's something that you mentioned us not doing a while back, and since then I couldn't help but notice uh, the team's use of them to, to the great effect against us. Oh, I couldn't I help but notice teams use them to great effect against us, but we still never seem to call them. However, against the Vikings, I could have sworn I saw a couple get called for big games. Is this going to be a new feature for our offense? I hope so. Love to you and your family. I appreciate that, Simeon. I hope so, too. I really do. I think we all do because this would break the mold in terms of the Ravens running that one screen per month. Next question came from my boy Joshua. He said, "Are oh, the Ravens too wise for their own good as an organization?" Hey, and Graven, appreciate all the great reporting and positivity you keep up. It's refreshing. Appreciate it, Jay. He said, "I hear a lot of ra- a lot of talk about Ravens being a sound organization that makes smart decisions. We rely on draft picks, comp picks, cap space incentives, building players from the ground up, yada yada yada." But is the failure to bring in a bona fide superstar, a top 30 player, via trade or free agent signing, is that a testament of pride that's stopping this team from reaching the Super Bowl? We all laugh at teams like the Cowboys, the Browns, Cardinals, and Rams for making crazy decisions. I don't laugh at them for it. I I would love if the Ravens did something like that. But anyway, uh, but sometimes I wish the Ravens thought a little bit more like them and got out of their comfort zone. Got to get off your high horse if we're ever going to win a Super Bowl or ever going to win one again. Um, that's, that's a very, that's a tricky one. Now, I, I think with that, I, I think that with the Ravens, they are a team that is like, it's the best way to explain it. Um, I feel like it's one of the reasons they don't, they don't give out these big contracts to these, these players that, um, that did not come from them. Reason being, I think, and it could be a gift and a curse, but I think they're just scared. I think that they're, I think they're scared uh, of if the player is going to be a good fit, uh, if the player is going to be able to still have the same impact that they once had at their previous team, if the player will still remain like the same player after he joins the Ravens. Um, now, I, I like I said, I wish they would get out of that because y'all know me. I'm, I'm aggressive. Like for, even for Xavier Howard, I would have been willing to give up a high pick. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially if you feel like you want to go all in with this team now, like Julio Jones, I would have been all over that, all over that. Like for Lamar giving him a Julio Jones, and you got a Hollywood, and you would have Bateman, man, would have been all over that, man. And then with DeAndre Hopkins, it's and then what? what There's been plenty more, but I just there's some players that some players you may question if they're fit or not, but then there's some players that you just straight up know are ballers. Straight up, man. You just know these dudes can play. They, 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 they got the game of the NFL on lock. They get it. So I, I wish the Ravens would be. And I know some people, well, that's not our MO. That's not how we get down. They take care of our own, which they do. They take care of a lot of their own guys. Some of their guys who we wish they would have taken care of. Even Not even just with hindsight. Because with Darius Smith, he was one of them. 
I know a lot of Ravens fans be like, oh, man, see, look at look, look, Darius Smith out there balling. He was balling his last season with the Ravens, too. And we, I, I was hoping they would keep him. I knew they weren't going to keep him, but I was hoping that they would. But he knew they weren't going to keep him, too. He knew that. Um, but it's – so it's, it's, it's not always hindsight. And I know a lot of guys now in hindsight, uh, after – when Patrick Queen was really struggling, when he was still the, the Mike linebacker, a lot of guys started missing C.J. Mosley. They were like, oh, man, we ain't had these problems with C.J. Mosley. We really didn't. C.J. Mosley was a good player, but his, his thing was he just didn't have that burst. He didn't have that speed. Um, so, as a blitzer, it, uh, it wasn't it for him. Everything else he could do, but blitzing and whatnot, no. Nah, he's a small player. Could tackle. Anyway, um, I just think it's that the Ravens, they, they're they very busy taking care of their own guys, and they just, they, they, they've been burned. They've been burned a couple times. Like with the Earl Thomas, they, they regretted that. And, and this is more recent stuff. With the Earl Thomas, they regretted that one. They're like, oh, man, we brought in this guy from the outside, and he did that. Like, man, um, they were, and they probably like, man, the, 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 the one time where we really step out of our comfort zone, we really give somebody a big deal outside of who, outside that never played for us before. And this is what happens. So, yeah, I just, I just think they're scared. That's it. Next question came from my boy, Mike Reed. He said, engraving, Mike Reed here, Ken Air Reed, LOL. Hope all is well with you and the family. Everything is great, my friend. Keeping it short and sweet this time, with OBJ being a free agent at the end of the season, do you think EDC shoots his shot then? Speaking of guys, nope. I do not. Not at all. Uh, might be able to get him on a cheap deal. I know our receivers have been producing better this year, but you can never have too many weapons, and Sammy just signed for a one-year deal. Uh, no, I, I don't see it happening at all. Um, with Odell Beckham Jr., uh, yeah, they could get him. Well, they could possibly, but because he's... He's on the last year of his deal now because Browns, they took out the last two years. So he's on the last year of his deal now. But if he clears waivers, then he, he's just probably going to sign a one-year deal uh, with somebody for the rest, with the, for the rest of the season. Um, so, no, I, I, I just I don't think it happens at all. Uh, with Odell Beckham Jr., they, they, with Sammy Watkins, depending on how the rest of the season goes, we can see. But you still want another guy because Sammy Watkins, Sammy Watkins, he got his injury problems. And we see it again this year. He's missed the last three games, I want to say. Because he missed, what did he miss, two games before the bye, I think. And then he missed this game against the Vikings, too. So, and he, he was right about to play, but then they said he had like a thigh injury or something. So, um, you, you want more. You want more. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think Odell Beckham Jr. will come to the Ravens. I wouldn't mind it, but... I don't think it happens at all. Next question came from my boy Jackson. He said, hey, Dan Graven been watching for a hot minute now. 50K on the way. Appreciate it. I've uh, been a fan of this series, but haven't ever sent a message myself because all my questions are usually asked by someone else. But someone I don't see talked about much is the possibility of Ravens drafting a defensive tackle this year, like DeMarvin Leal or Majai Sanders, because Brandon Williams hasn't been healthy, and when he has played, he's been underwhelming. He isn't getting any younger, uh, either the same thing for most of this defensive line. Uh, with a defensive tackle being drafted, I feel like we'd be able to plug up run lanes down the middle, which have hurt us this year, and also have someone to eat up blocks so away and others can get more one-on-one -on -one opportunities for sex. If I'm being honest, I feel like our D-line has been our liability because they are getting old and not as effective as they used to. We need to rebuild it with youth and speed. Hmm. That is uh, whew, that's something right there. Brandon Williams, last year's contract, I think he's going after this year for sure. Calais Campbell, contemplating retirement, I think he's going after this year. Derek Wolf been hurt all year. I think he's going after this year. Uh, I think this defensive line will definitely be rebuilt. Justin Houston, I forgot if they signed him to a one-year deal or a two-year deal. I forgot, but he could be going after this year too. Um, so Ravens, yeah, they could have a completely revamped defensive line. And with the additions of guys like when they traded for Calais Campbell and they drafted Justin Matabike, um, you could tell that they're looking for just a shift. They're looking to get more athletic uh, on a defensive line. Um, so, yeah, I, they, they are definitely going to be revamped, and they will definitely be drafting some interior defensive linemen. And, and, and in addition to the things you said, we're eating up blocks and plugging up the middle also to get interior pressure because we don't get that like at all. We can get somebody that can really generate some interior pressure. It, it will make the defense that much better.
Next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening, Raven? I know all Ravens won another overtime through the day, but I have a few things I want to touch on. First, I agree with all your takes in the Ravens-Vikings pregame video. I wrote in the comment section that I agree with your points about the adjustments the Ravens need to make. But I also wrote that I wasn't confident that the Ravens were going to make those adjustments because Harbaugh and his offense and defensive coordinators are too stubborn with their egos. Listen closely to their pressers. Roman clearly says all the time that the Ravens are sticking with the running back by committee approach, even though it's obviously not working. Um, now, yeah, with the running back by committee, y'all know how I feel about that one. I just, I wish they would just establish a hot hand and stop trying to keep everybody happy. Because um, I feel like it would just be better for the team in the uh, the long and the short run. Anyway, he said another thing. When the O-line is clearly struggling pass protecting, why are they steadily running a pa running pass plays with empty backfield formations? Shaking my head. And I also don't like that they run an up-tempo offense in crucial moments of the game. Now, what? now that one... I don't I don't understand why you don't like the up tempo offense. Like why not? Especially if you if you gotta move, you you gotta you gotta get it going, you gotta keep it going. And the up tempo offense is something that I would I would actually like to see a bit more. Um especially when they when they moving that ball, I, I would like to see them just keep moving that ball and keep putting the pressure on that defense and that doesn't allow them to make substitutions, especially if you got a mismatch. I think they should do that a bit more. He said not a wink. Uh, he tells us in the presses that we always go in the blitz with everybody in that and that we're a positionless defense. All I've seen is the Ravens giving up big plays game after game because nobody on the defense is actually in position. Uh, shaking my head. He got safeties at linebacker spots, linebackers deep in coverage, and the defense looking out of whack. We don't get sacks because they rotate the pass rushes after every single play. Now, with that part, okay, and he said, he said, who's going to get in any kind of groove like that? Shaking my head. I know this is a long email, and trust me, I have... Uh, a litany of other things I can rant about too, but just curious to hear your thoughts on my observation slash takes. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Yes, the part um, with the pass rushes. Um, yeah, it, and again, we know Unique touched on it, uh, but it's true. If you don't let somebody get into a rhythm, how are they gonna like really get going? Like if they if they if you they rush the pass for like one play, all right, hey, come off, get a breather, then let, let, let this guy go now. And it's like oh. Uh, okay Like yeah you're keeping them fresh But at the same time They trying to work that offensive lineman To see what that offensive lineman is struggling with To see what, how they can beat that offensive lineman You gotta let them stay in there And he don't, he don't rotate them after every single play But there, there's a lot of rotations And a lot of change ups and stuff um, And we just wish that it, Guys could just like I said get, in, get into more of that rhythm Just really get, a, get, get into that flow And then really get after that quarterback Next question came from my boy Ricky B. He said, what's up, Engraven? Uh, when reading the after game thoughts in the Ravens app, a question that was asked was, what was different in both halves? Uh, it was said that they told Lamar to start taking what the defense was giving him. The first half, the defense was taking the deep passes, meaning everything underneath was open. Why did they wait until the second half to tell Lamar this? Uh, do you think they were trying to let him figure it out himself? I think that needs to be said before every game. Uh, I mean, we can still take some shots with them playing deep, but take those easy throws. Appreciate you for all you do, bro. Thank you, Ricky. Um, one thing about the Ravens, I know my guy uh, Skeptical brought it up before, but I was um, while I was watching the uh, the Ravens game, I was like, oh wow, there it goes. They don't really have an underneath passing game. They don't. Their passing game is intermediate stuff, is deep stuff. But underneath, they don't really work the under, underneath on the field. The short passing game, they don't. It seems like with Ravens passing game, it's one of those things where it's more like an all or nothing type of thing. And defenses, they, they can key in on that stuff. So it's important that you establish something underneath too. Little drag routes, little slants and stuff like that. Like Ravens, they, I feel like sometimes with the, uh, the passing game, they can overcomplicate things. And <clears throat> you can miss some opportunities that could be right there in front of you. Just, again, simple stuff. Simple stuff. Just to get your receivers going. Just to get them in a little rhythm and whatnot. Um, so I, I would like to see a lot more of that moving forward because it, it would really open up the pass game. But as far as, um, yeah, and that would, that would help with Lamar taking with what's in front of him. Because uh, they, they know that he want to get that deep ball to Hollywood. They know that he want to get Rashad Bateman going too, and then soon Sammy when he gets back as well. Um, so it's important that if you're not getting that, even if you are getting that, still work the underneath of the field too. Um, and it shouldn't take the second half to start doing that. The last question on this episode, a question from Subs, came from my boy Lord Valley. He said, what's up, my boy? Big trust. 
And big love to you and the family. Appreciate it, man. Finally, QB wide receiver and tight end are producing at once. I kind of feel that uh, us wanting a run game to be 150 yards plus a game is being greedy because we are spoiled. We have everything that we need on offense. And as I saw, our running back started to turn the clock back in the fourth quarter once they saw we got a shot to win. And once again, like the Raiders game, Lamar wins the game and defense gives up a touchdown. <laughs> Hey, but look, they made up for it because yeah, Lamar they got the the go ahead touchdown, and I was I thought that the defense was gonna end it, but you saw what happened. But then in overtime, Lamar threw the pick, and Anthony Ball crazy play, crazy great play. But the defense made the stop; they held them, so they made up for it. They was like, okay, we got you. Uh, but anyway, he said, um, but he said Stevens got to be. Uh, aware on the fourth down play seriously uh, my question for you is with the Dolphins and a trip to Chicago next do you think the team should go into these trap games or how do you think the team should go into these trap games because remember we won but every top team lost but the Titans who are seven and two so what should we focus on with these two teams in in, in the game to help strengthen our play on the back end of the season peace brother nothing but consistency consistency and starting off earlier I think one of the biggest things that I would love to see in these next couple of games against the Dolphins and the Bears, even though they are lesser teams or whatnot, they they still NFL players and they still it's any given Sunday. So Ravens obviously can't sleep on them, um, and they get don't go don't get off to slow starts. Start off hot, start off fast, uh, start off aggressive, and, and just start off smart too. Because if you get off to a slow start, you you. Anything you do that is negative for your team that will give the opposing team that much more confidence and be like, hold up. These dudes, they they really ain't that much better than us. Because if you if you let them hang around, if you let these bad teams hang around, that gives them confidence and they don't have anything to play for. So a team that doesn't have anything to play for, those are the most dangerous types of teams. So, yeah, these are two trap games for sure. But Ravens just can't fall for the trap. And again, they've been phenomenal at not falling for the trap under Lamar Jackson. Don't start the trend now. So they need to get out early, get out to early leads, and just keep applying that pressure uh, and, and, and hold them out of the end zone. Hold these teams out of the end zone. Don't give them any type of confidence. Shout out to Raven.